Okay, let me share this screen with some thoughts on moral hazard now, slideshow uh, from current slide. Um, and like I said before, I hit the record button. Moral hazard is sometimes given as a reason not to provide insurance to everybody. And it's because if you, <laughs> If you're insured against a bad outcome, in other words, if a bad outcome happens, you know somebody else will pay for it, you're not gonna have to personally pay for it, then you'll take less steps to avoid it. But the real question is, does this affect health insurance? You think people don't care whether they're healthy or not, whether they get sick? Uh, I don't know, what do you guys think? Like if you knew all of your medical bills would be paid for you, would that mean you would just let yourself get sick? Or take less, you know, you wouldn't wash your hands anymore. You wouldn't, uh, you know, you, would, you wouldn't wear a helmet when you were riding your bike because you know, oh, I'm, I have health insurance. I don't need to, to, to ride to wear a helmet. No. And, <laughs> no, that's a pretty good answer. No, I wouldn't do that. I agree, Tina, because people care about their health. So, let me just explain what moral hazard is. So you, maybe you've heard it in another class, maybe you haven't, but there could be some cases where it does matter. You know where it really matters is when you're taking a financial risk, like you're a bank. Let's say you're a bank and you're taking some kind of financial risk and you know if it, if it turns out badly, you'll be bailed out, everything will be fine. That really matters, doesn't it? There's a moral hazard problem there that says, if, if you know nothing bad will happen to you, if, uh, if, if your, your risk fails, then you might as well take the biggest risk you can. If it succeeds, you're, you'll look like a genius. So I think in some industries, moral hazard is a serious problem that we shouldn't always bail out companies that fail. We shouldn't um, bail out and you know, provide insurance for people uh, who are taking unnecessary risks because we, they have to suffer the consequences from failure. Otherwise, they're going to be encouraged to take too many risks. So I think there is where moral hazard matters. If you're an economist and you're learning about moral hazard, that's where it applies. But for health insurance, I agree with Tina, her one word answer, no. Uh, this doesn't really affect health insurance. People want to stay healthy because they want to be healthy. They don't want to get sick. So insuring them doesn't cause a moral hazard problem in my mind. You could make the argument that actually, yeah, it does. You know, um, <coughs> there's people out there who will be even crazier if they know that um, there's a national health plan that'll pay for all of their bills. But um, I personally don't agree with that. Okay, um, and then and then we had this thing about adverse selection, which we, we we've already had, we've already said something about. I think what what might be interesting is if we talk about the reason for insurance in the first place, in in terms of um, utility, right? Utility is a is the normal way that economists talk about. Uh, rational choice. I will choose the thing that gives me the highest utility. Well, expected utility is a is the next line of reasoning that says, not only will I choose the thing that gives me the highest utility, I will choose the thing that gives me the highest expected utility, where expected utility is a mathematical uh, construct that says, uh, I will weight the likelihood of each outcome according to some probability, and I will multiply the utility times that probability and add up every, every case. So if I may get sick I may, or I may be healthy, I take the probability that I'm sick times my utility if I'm sick, plus the probability that I'm healthy times the utility if I'm healthy, and that's what I really care about. Adding those two things together is my expected utility. I have this example here does anyone want to do a hazard a guess? If you've had me for behavioral economics, you may have seen the exact same 
uh, example when I was talking about expecting utility there. Or have I done it in this class already? Oh, I don't remember doing it in this class. But let's say your utility of wealth is the square root of W. W is your wealth, and the square root of it is your utility. If you, have a, if you currently have a wealth of 10,000, what's your utility? It's the square root of 10,000, which is 100. What if with probability 50%, the consumer has an accident and will lose $6,400? What is her expected utility? Anyone want to get, hazard a guess for this? What seems ridiculous to you? I don't understand. Robert, were you talking to me or somebody else? What was earlier? During moral hazard. I still don't understand. Oh, okay. Well, um, <laughs> can anyone think about the, the, the math that's going on here? This is a question. What is her expected utility? You can answer this question. It's the probability of an accident, which is 50%, times the utility that I get if there's an accident plus the probability that there's no accident times the utility I get if there's no accident. This is how, this is how um, expected utility works. And it's the whole reason why insurance markets are, are good. That's good, Ryan. He said 0.5 times square root of 1,000, which is 100, plus 0.5 times square root of 3,600, which is how much you would have left over after the accident, if you lost 6,400. That's right. The expected utility, did I write it? No, I didn't write it. Um, yeah, that would be one half of 100 plus one half of 60. That's 80. So you'd have an, you'd have an expected utility of 80. 0.5 times 100 plus 0.5 times 60 equals 80. The average of 160. Okay, and these next two lines are saying, could an insurance company actually provide insurance and make both parties better off? It would make the insurance company better off because um, they earn a profit on average, an expectation they earn a profit, and it makes the consumer better off, not because it's profitable, but because it improves their expected utility. And this is a this is kind of a, a subtle point, but the point is the the person has is is risk averse. They don't like taking risks, and um, if they can be if they can have those risks taken away and just pay a sure amount of thirty five hundred dollars. If they pay thirty five hundred for sure, uh, then how much wealth do they have left over? Ten thousand minus 3,500, which is 6,500. And then you have to ask yourself, okay, what's the square root of 6,500? What's the square root of 6,500? Square root of 6,500 is approximately 80.6, 80.6 something. So, so the consumer gets a utility, utility of, 80.6 if she is insured um, with, with, a, with a premium premium of $3,500, okay? The, the point there is the consumer would rather buy this insurance policy because it improves her expected utility. And the firm is happy to provide this insurance policy because on average, they're going to make money from it. Um, why? Let, let's see. The insurance costs are, uh, sorry, 6400 That's how much they would have to pay for their medical bills. Uh, but times 0 0.5, because there's only an accident, half the time, which is 3200 Okay. So in this example, the, the firm makes money on average. They only have to pay 3,200. 
uh, of costs, but they get a premium of 3,500, that's good for the firm. Uh, the consumer is happy because they get an, they get an expected utility of 80.6, which is better than their expected utility of 80 if they're not insured. So this example provides, you look at the headline of the, the, the top line of my slide, insurance markets can provide surplus. That's what's happening here. Um, there's a surplus <coughs> in the sense that uh, both parties are, are better off than if they hadn't made this trade. <coughs> I may be kind of ambitious now, but I want to see if this can happen with us. Um, where is that? Maybe it's the same. No, not that. Um, that's better. No, that's better. This one. Yes. Okay. I think right now I'm sharing a um, a spreadsheet that has a lot of numbers on it, but it really has to do with what I just did. Uh, what I just did with this example of expected utility, I'm not sure you guys didn't tell me whether you, you had any questions or if it made sense to you, but the point, of, the point of that example I just gave was that somebody who has some probability of getting sick and an expected utility that is the square root function, which is the this expected utility function I used, um, they can benefit from buying insurance. And a, a insurance company would benefit from giving them insurance. I'm wondering if we can, <coughs> excuse me, see that in action a little bit. I don't know why I'm coughing. But um, <coughs> one thing I want to have is different probabilities of getting sick. And with these different probabilities of getting, I'm not sure if this is going to work. <laughs> let's just, uh, let's try it. And it may have to be like me helping you because we only have 20 some minutes to try to explain how all of this works. Um, but let me know in the chat if you're willing to, to do this. Uh, can we have the same two, two firms? How about that, Daniel and can we have Daniel and Colin? You guys are, are I'm fine great. with that. You're great uh, entrepreneurs. Okay, so Daniel and Colin, you can be the insurance companies. What do you have to do? You have to provide insurance to people. Uh, so somebody who's willing to play, let me know, and I, I, and I'll and I'll I'll put your name here. And what this what this table tells you is, like. Who's, who's somebody that's willing to play? I don't know, Tina. I'm assuming Tina's willing to play since she said no earlier. She spoke. Okay. This says if she's, if, if she's healthy, she has a wealth of 100, a utility of 10, which is the square root of 100. If she's sick, I'm making this extreme now, where if you're healthy, you get 100. If you're sick, you get zero. So like 100 or zero, those are the, and the square root of zero is zero. This column tells you the probability that you get sick. So in this example, Tina is very likely to get sick or actually equally likely, 50%. She has a 50% chance of getting sick, which means her utility would be zero and a 50% chance of staying healthy, which means her utility would be 10. Well, if you notice, you can see here, this is the probability of sick times this plus the probability of healthy times this. This is her expected utility. If you don't get insurance, it would only be five. Uh, so and in, in this table, I also have different levels of sickness. So this would be the sickest person, the person with 50% chance of getting sick. The next person only has 45%, the next 40, 35, 30. I'm gonna make this private. In other words, only you will know what your probability of being sick is. Daniel and Colin will not know. But okay, let's say, uh, Tina, they offer you a premium of 50, right? Let's say Tina gets a probability, uh, a premium of 50. That's exactly 
the most they would be willing to pay, right? Because, uh, sorry, the, the, the firm is going to have to pay whatever your probability of sickness is times 100. So the cost of getting sick is 100. So maybe I should put that here. Cost, uh, the cost of, to the firm is equal to the probability of sick. I mean, it's, it's always gonna be times 100, 50. But in all these other ones, it's less, right? So if you offer it an insurance of 50, um, sorry, <laughs> you wouldn't make any money on Tina uh, because in this example, she has uh, her costs, her medical costs are 50 and, you're, and she's paying you a premium of 50. So your profit, I'll say here, profit, profit to the firm is equal to the premium minus the cost, right? So on, 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 this first, on this first line, you're not making any profit, but on these other lines, you are. Look at that. You're, you'd be making, like if somebody, if somebody down here who is very healthy, 0.5% chance of getting sick, that's very healthy in this, in this game. If they were willing to pay a premium of 50, their cost of insuring them is only five. Because this is important for Daniel and Colin. Daniel and Colin, please pay attention to this fact. If you hire, if you give someone who's very low probability of sick a premium of something like 50, you're going to make a lot of money off that person because their cost to you is 0 0.05 times 100, which is only five. And you get the premium of 50. So this is how much profit you would make on that person. However, if you give a premium of 50 to someone like, in this example, Tina, who has a high probability of getting sick, uh, you would make zero profit off that person. Does that make sense? You make, well, so what if you change the premium? If you made the premium 60, wow, now you're, make, you're making more money off everybody, right? So that's how things work for you, Daniel and Colin. You are the insurance companies. You're trying to make as much money as you can. You want the premium to be as high as you can because the higher the premium, the more money you get. Uh, you wanna insure people with low costs if you can. And then, then you'll make the more profit on each person. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the the people, the, everyone else who's playing. And let me know if you want to play this. If you tell me you're playing, I'll tell you what your probability of being sick is. And that's private information. Sorry. Uh, but okay, Myron will play. I'm going to give Myron privately his, uh, I guess I should randomize this, huh? I should randomize this. We got Myron, Ryan. Uh, no, Nick was, Nick was the second one. Then Robert. Then Rhea. I'm doing it in the order you uh, said, then Ryan. Then Emmanuel uh, and Tina. I guess you can play. So with Michelle, I'm going to give you guys um, all. Oh, Shreyas wants in too. I guess you guys all want points for this class. You care about your grades, I suppose. Um, okay. Um, so just let me make sure you understand. I mean, I can never make sure you understand, but I want you to understand how the game works. All you have to do is make a deal if you want to with either Daniel or Colin for a premium. So all you have to do is they give you an, a, an amount, a premium, and if you say, okay, that's it, you're done. And I'll write, I'll write let's, say, let's say Tina chooses a provider of Daniel for a premium of 60. Uh, what, will, what will Tina's <coughs> payoff be? Oops, I didn't spell Daniel right, but... Uh, her payoff will be, I pointed at the screen as if you could see me point, but you can't see me point, I gotta use these. It would be this, here's your expected utility if you are insured. Tina, do you see that? It's 6.32. If you are not insured, this tells you what your insurance will be if you're not insured. Maybe I will leave this up. You know what, just to be as helpful as possible, I'm going to leave this up so that everyone can see, and I will say this too, common knowledge, everyone's probability of sickness will be something on this chart here, 
something between zero and 0 0.5, okay? So you, uh, Myron, Nick, Robert, Rhea, Ryan, everybody who's playing the game is going to learn what their probability of sickness is, something between zero and 0 0.5. Then they are going to try to negotiate with um, Daniel or Colin what their premium should be, okay? And if they agree, then you get the premium. Let's say, and let's say uh, you are probability sick is 0.4 and you agree on a premium of 45. Let's say that, I'm gonna delete some of these. I mean, I guess, you know, these are just for illustrative purposes only. But in that case, what will your payoff be? I will look here at expected utility of insurance and it's 7.4. If you, if you manage to get a low, oh, I didn't mean to be that. If, I, if you manage to get an even lower premium, like 40, your expected utility goes up. So you get more money the lower your premium is, right? If you get a premium of 20, wow. Look, if you get a premium of 10, okay, so you, you see this, you get, you get more payoff the lower your premium. Of course, because this number is the square root of 100 minus your premium. That's how much money you have left over. Okay, so that's how your payoff will. If you get insurance, I'll give you this column, the expected utility of being insured. If you do not get insurance, I'll give you this column, the expected utility of not being insured. So actually, if you're playing this game, you can guarantee yourself this expected utility of no insurance right here. Uh, why, don't I, why don't I put in some, you know, premiums, I don't know, 40, I don't know, just, just so you can see. I'm like that. I should tell, I, so I, I actually don't want you to think that the premium here, this equals the square root, square root of 100 minus premium, okay? Just so full disclosure, that's how this is determined. If your premium is 40, I'll take 100 minus 40, which is 60, and take the square root of that. That's where this number comes from. That's if you get insurance. If you don't get insurance, your, your payoff will be this number, which will be determined by whatever your real probability of sickness is. Okay, I think, do you guys have any questions about this? I didn't leave much time to actually play this game. Uh, so we gotta go quick. Where are you? <coughs> Excuse me, here we go, chat. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it so that I'll have, I have a randomization procedure but I'm, that I'm not going to tell you guys what it is. Um, but I will say the uh, procedure leaves the average of 0.25 of the probability of getting sick. Okay, so I'm just gonna send you a number, and that number is the probability that you will, be, you will get sick, okay? Um, that, that was yours, Myron. Nick, there's yours. Uh, Robert, there's yours. Um, Rhea, you're next. Ryan. Uh, once you have your probability, you can start negotiating for a premium with Daniel or Robert. Daniel or Robert, if you're willing to offer premiums to these people, uh, if, if you're not willing, then I, maybe I made a mistake and I should have incentivized you better. What did I say? I meant Colin. Yeah, Daniel, Daniel and Colin, whatever, whatever I said. I think my, my wires were crossed because I was looking and typing at the same time. Yeah. Michelle, I have to individually type to you what your probabilities are. I think one more is Shriyas, and then I'm done. So, 
uh, let me know if, if, you're, if you're playing this game, if you find someone who will give you health insurance at a premium that you will accept, let me know and I, I will put you in. Um, once again, it's kind of dis. Oops. Ooh, don't end the meeting. Um, I, it's, I, I'm not really helping organize this market, but I'm, I'm willing to. Um, let me let me tell let me tell something else to Colin and uh, Colin and Daniel. Before you guys do anything, let me just say the maximum is 0.4 and the minimum is 0.1. So everyone is somewhere in between 0.4 and 0.1, okay? Uh, just, just that's for your information uh, when you are trying to decide what your premium should be. Right, right Colin and Daniel? If you give them a premium of 40 now, you will be making zero profit on this person with the, the, the sickest person. But if you give them a premium of 40, you'll be making a profit of 30 on this person down here who's, who's very unlikely to be sick. Did I mess these numbers up? Something's weird. What about 30, premiums of 30? I'm gonna look at premiums of 30 now. And if you offer premiums of 30, you'll actually be losing some money on the sick people, the sickest, and then it comes to zero and you'll be making some money here, but they'll, they'll be happier. They'll be getting uh, more stuff. <laughs> this is too complicated. Do you guys have any questions? Can I, can I sort of make this easier for you somehow? Colin and Daniel, have you been talking to anyone? Um, I'm having some conversation here and there. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm negotiating. You're negotiating premiums? That's good. Um, I'm a little worried that... Hmm. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lock in that I have Michelle, Shrias, Myron, and Ryan. Okay. I'm, I'm oh, just kidding. Ryan just backed out on me. Very rude. Very rude. Okay. So you, you got, uh, you don't have to tell me their, their, uh, premiums yet. Uh, Michelle was in. Okay. Maybe, yeah. maybe they're trying to get a lower premium somewhere else. Has anyone told you what their probability of sickness is? Has anyone said, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm totally healthy. You can insure me. Would you believe them if they said that? They could be lying. They could be bluffing. Or maybe they would never, they would never bluff. Daniel, have you gotten anyone, any, any premiums? Yeah, I, I sent it to you in the chat individually. Oh, okay. I didn't mean looking at the chat, I guess. Uh, oh, it may, sorry, it may, I, I had some, I had some questions here I need to answer. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Emmanuel said, what are we doing with the probability that we might get sick again? Okay, so if you, if your probability of getting sick is, let's say, 0.3, if you do not get insurance, this will be your expected utility. Your payoff will be seven. If you do get insurance, this will be your utility where I can't necessarily calculate it for you. It depends on your premium, but you can use this formula. If you have a calculator, take the square root of 100 minus whatever your premium is. So maybe I should give like different examples here for like, uh, like what's the lowest the premium could be? I don't know, 10, it could, it could get pretty low and then I'll go up in intervals like this. So you can see what happens with different premiums. Although, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it should go up even higher. Um, but does that answer your question, Emmanuel? If you choose not to get insurance, which you don't have to, you can say, I just don't want any insurance. There's no premium that I want to pay for. Then you will get whatever's in this column, 
according to your sickness. You know your probability of sick. You can calculate here what your, your expected utility will be if you don't get insurance. If you do get insurance, then it doesn't matter what your probability of sick is, right? Because your, your healthcare costs are gonna be paid either way. So you don't care uh, whether, what your probability is of getting sick. You just, you care about your premium. And this will tell you what your expected utility is in terms of your premium. Of course, you can calculate it yourself using this formula, but just as an illustration, I'll put this up for you so you can see. Um, okay, guys, are, you, are we almost done? Uh, O'Colin also has Nick and Robert. Nick. How come it's not there? Robert. Wow, Colin's uh, getting a lot. Oh, Daniel, Daniel has Tina uh, and Ryan. And um, anyone else, Daniel? Oh, and Rhea. Okay. Um, this is all, all this is all decentralized. Did, did I get everybody? I think maybe there's one person who does, does, doesn't have insurance and, and that's okay. You're allowed to not have insurance. Um, who, who has not gotten insurance? Emmanuel, maybe the only one. Are you going to go with no insurance, Emmanuel? He's the, he's the only one who isn't, un, isn't insured. That's okay. Maybe he's he's healthy and he just says, "I'll I will take my my uh, amount." I think we should stop here. Okay. Let's see. Can we can we see how well the uh, the two firms did? So if you're uh, so I'll, I'll write next to. You. Uh, okay. we, we have a we have a last minute change. Um, Emmanuel changes mind. He, he's he's gonna roll with me now. He is, and you and you agreed on premiums. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna send it to you in the chat right now. I'll write your profit here. So everyone got insurance. I hope you guys know you didn't have to get insurance. If I made it sound like you had to get insurance, that was my fault. I didn't mean to make it that sound that way. Um. Manuel is going to pay a premium of 50. Is that right, Emmanuel? From for Daniel? Uh, uh, 50. Um, Kevin, you, you, you <laughs> I don't think you're playing. I didn't give you, you didn't say you were playing, so I didn't give you a, um, a probability. Uh, sorry. Let, let me write down the M Michelle 60. Michelle, you're paying a lot of premium here. Shrias 50. Look at this discrimination. 35. Nick 15. Did, were, were you convinced that Nick was healthy? Why? Uh, oh, wait. Yeah, you, you paid a low premium to Nick. You must have been convinced he was a healthy person. Um, Rhea... Uh, where's Daniel? Where did you, Daniel, did you write your numbers anywhere? Yeah, I did. It's all in there. Tina, 40. It's all, it's just not all at once. Um, Ryan, Rhea, where are these? I can't find it. Ryan's 40. Uh, Rhea, what's Rhea? Rhea's premium. 34. 34, got it. All right, I think that's everybody. Um, what I need to do now, let's, let's make another call. And, and then Kevin just reevaluated his offer. So he's, uh, uh, sorry, Kevin, you, you, you can't play this late in the game because I didn't give you a, I didn't give you a probability of sickness. It doesn't make sense if you don't have a probability of sickness, which I need to write here. Uh, probability is sick. Um, here we go. Cause that is, that's how your profit is going to be determined. I'm curious, did anybody like tell you what their probabilities were? So uh, you want your people to be low probability of sickness and Shrias is low, Myron is low, Michelle is high. Guys, I, I made it simple. I made either low or high. I didn't put anybody in the middle. Uh, Nick is high. I think you're gonna lose money on Nick. Robert is low. 
Uh, Tina, low probability. Ryan's low probability. Rhea's high. And Emmanuel is high. Okay, so there was a lot of pooling here. Let's see what how much you earned. You earned um, the premium minus 100 times the probability that they get sick. So you earned a profit of 30 on Tina, uh, 30 on Ryan, uh, you lost six. So your total is uh, 64. You made $64, uh, Daniel, good job. Uh, well, let's see what Colin did. He earned a premium of 50 minus 100 times the cost of being sick. Wow, you earned 40 bucks on Shrias. 25, 20, you lost $25 on Nick. Uh, I'm not sure you should have uh, given that offer to Nick. I don't really know why you did. <laughs> but you made $80 total. You made 80. Uh, so Colin is the winner. Good job, Colin. Everybody else, you will get your payoff according to, uh, you know, I'll, I'll figure it out. Uh, I'll figure it out after the, well, actually, actually, you all know exactly your payoff. It's, it's um, 100 minus your premium square root, the square root of that. So I will uh, put that in, uh, like you get, you get those points for having participated in this class. What did I think was gonna happen today? Do you guys have a little bit of time for us to analyze this? Uh, we ran out of time, but what, what, what happened here with these premiums? First of all, how is there such difference premiums? I'm shocked. Nick, how did you get such a low premium? What did you say? Nick, Nick was a very convincing negotiator. <laughs> You lost, you lost 25 points on Nick. If you had just not given Nick an offer, you would have had 105 points from today. I'm, I'm wondering wh what happened? Why, di why did you give him such a good premium? I kind of had a luxury of there not being an actual risk of some sort of health incident, I guess. So I could just hold out uh, yeah. and let it appear that there was yeah. no issue. And then some of you accepted some pretty high premiums. Let's see, uh, 50. If your premium is 50, uh, then your payoff is seven, I guess, but that's still better than uh, the payoff of six, which is what you get if you're uninsured, right? Um, even Michelle, who paid the highest premium in the whole game, she got a payoff of 6.3, which is better than what she would get if she weren't insured. Do you guys see that? Michelle, yeah. Michelle looks like she paid way too much of a premium. But actually, it is unfortunate that she uh, had to pay so much, but it's still better to her than being uninsured because she'll get a payoff of 6.3, which is better than uh, if she were uninsured getting a payoff of six. Daniel so, and I, uh, we, we kind of violated some antitrust laws by agreeing to set high premiums. Oh, really? <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys could go to jail for that, you know. If you, if you are conspiring illegally to collude, to keep prices high against the interests of the consumers, that, that is illegal. Um, you definitely get fined, but if it's blatant enough, you can go to jail. Uh, that's very interesting. I need to make, okay, uh, <laughs> you guys are funny. But what, what, sh <laughs> what should have happened here, maybe is a little bit of adverse selection, which would mean that uh, there would be some people who's like, no, I don't want that policy because it's too high. And you, you sort of expect that the people are going to be, um, let me say this, I, I think maybe mathematically it didn't necessarily have to happen and it didn't. It seems like you guys offered the premiums regardless. Um, I, I don't even know how you, how you chose the premiums, but you know, they're as high as 60 and as low as 15. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be any death spirals going on. Um, but, but, but that's what adverse selection would say. It was, would be like, you're negotiating with someone for a high premium and anybody who's healthy says, nah, I don't want it, right? Think about it. Uh, if they were healthy, they could get themselves a payoff, a, a high payoff without taking your insurance. I think that's what people didn't realize. You guys who were healthy, I think you might not have realized you could have gotten yourself a payoff of nine just by not getting the insurance. I think there was some misunderstanding there. But if you guys had understood that better, then maybe you would have refused some of these premiums. 
you would have said, you know what? No, I don't want it. And that would have caused the premiums to go up because Daniel and Colin maybe would have thought to themselves, oh, I can't get any of the healthy people to accept my offers. I'm probably only getting these really sick people. And, and uh, that, that's, that's what happens with a, in a market with adverse selection. It didn't happen here. It didn't happen here, even though I thought maybe it would. Um, but that's okay. I'm still happy with the outcome because I think you got to see a little bit what an insurance market might look like if it was completely a free for all. <laughs> this was definitely a free for all. And premiums were all over the place. Um, I, I, don't, I don't even know how to really explain what happened other than uh, people did, did seem like they wanted to get a premium. Uh, sorry, they wanted to be insured, even though you had this option to not get insurance and, and people just weren't taking it, really. Okay, next class. Next class, we are going to have this debate on whether we should wipe this whole insurance market off the map and only provide people... So, so the, the weird frictions that are happening here in this market, including adverse selection, which we didn't see, but we could have seen, um, all that goes away if we just provide universal health insurance and, and people don't have to worry about whether there's somebody out there who's willing to insure them because it's profitable for, to be, for them to be insured. Um, there, there's a lot of economic benefits to that. We should talk about the other side of the, of the coin too, which is, Maybe it's very, very costly to do this. Maybe there will be longer lines. Maybe there will be uh, these other problems. Um, and so in your, in your homework, please write about at least two economic arguments, either for or against, or one of each, uh, this idea of going to universal healthcare, where no longer um, is there this insurance market for profit that we saw today. Do uh, you guys have any questions? Sorry, man, I'm way over. I'm way over. I apologize. You guys can go if you need to.